Okay, so the average speed of the object during the first four seconds. So that's like saying t equals zero to t equals four. And uh, your instructor may have at some point said average rate of change, mm -hmm. which is the same thing as, as um, average speed. Uh, all, these, all these words are the same. So there's, there's f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And, and you might see something similar, but it's essentially you evaluate the function at four. That's this part, this first part. Then you evaluate it at the other number. So it's like it's like later minus earlier over the difference in the times. Okay. So in your case, you, you have to find you, your a is zero, your b is four, and then you have to find y of zero, which is 20 times zero squared, which equals zero. zero. Y of four, which is 20 times four squared. So that's 320. And then you put it into this formula. So the, the first over, one, 320 over four. Yeah, over four minus zero. And that's how you got 80. OK. So, so, so that's average speed, average rate of change, a rock. It's also the slope. Like for what that's worth, because essentially this twenty oh, t squared. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay. This twenty t squared looks like that, and you're getting you're getting these two points, and you're connecting them with a straight line, and that's that's this number is the slope of that line. So our is the a always going to be zero? No. Oh, okay. It will tell you. They generally have to give that to you. Okay. Um, so have you had this instructor before? Yeah, I know? have. I had him. Um for algebra two trig in my sophomore year. Okay. Then then you know whether the instructor gives you sort of odd questions or not. Yeah, he's pretty um, straightforward. He's not like Mr. Krauss who was yeah. all yes. over the place. <laughs> yeah, okay. So question two is like question one. So let me move to question uh, three here. I, I know you can't see these until I snip them in. So if, if you really want another one, you'll have to tell me for sure. Okay. Um, all right. So this is the, they're, they're giving you all these properties of limits and um, I'm, I'm not your instructor, so I can, I can be a little bit more open-minded and say, these are, these are useful only while you are doing this chapter of, of this class and then you don't use the limits uh, again, but you have to know them here. Yeah. Uh, so one of the limits is that you can basically take the value and put it into the function. So like the limit, let me just do a different, let's just say the limit as X approaches A, th this is like putting A into the function for X at each of those positions. Mm -hmm. So this, this thing right here that I'm writing, this is, this is the thing you're taking the limit of, you're taking the limit of this at X equals A. And, and, the, and the mechanics of it is you're just putting A in for X, put A in for X. So four A cubed minus six A squared plus four A minus one. Okay. So if I give you a number, you can put that number in for X. That's kind of the most basic property. And that's kind of what they're saying here. I, I kind of prefer it this way. The, the limit as X approaches a, which is just a number, f of x equals f of a, meaning you take x and replace it with a wherever you see it in that, that function. Basically, all you did was just put a c wherever there was an x. That's right. And I use letter a because a is a little more common right. than c, but that's, that's, that's okay. what you got there. Okay. Okay, so here is here is another example. I skipped to question five. Excuse me, let me snip that in. Okay, so the limit as X approaches one here of this thing right here, I'm gonna scratch this out. It's, it's like putting one in for, for X. So it's five times one to the fourth 
minus seven times one squared plus six. Okay. As you just take that number and just put it in. Yeah. Now that that like like you've heard me say this over the years, like that works eighty percent of the time, and there are exceptions, but we haven't seen one yet. So it's five minus seven plus six, which is uh, four. Oh, that's so simple. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, none of these are exam questions. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, also, the exam is going to be more like an AP format, so it'll be multiple choice and then um, like a free response section. All right. So this is where um, it would be nice to know any you have any friends or, 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 you know, you've got sisters, any sisters take this class with this teacher to get any sort of insights into that, because I have a little bit more I can say on this. But do you do you think you'll have access to some of those you know, um, materials? To help you on the exam i only know one person that took it last year okay well, maybe you don't want to answer me but just think about you know <laughs> yeah. think about that um so the eight it's really hard to give ap questions this early in the class there's i don't know i don't remember how many questions are on the ap but like like at most there'd be one question from this unit on there yeah i don't think he's like actually taking ap question i think he just makes it like an ap test i see i see so to me that means it's more like sat act multiple choice stuff yeah um, and by the way how did that go have you taken the test or you i some took it in june and i'm taking it on saturday <laughs> again great great you're gonna do even better this time so um that's it's that's um that's good to hear. So now, did you um, did you know if you'll have a calculator portion of this exam? Um, I honestly don't know because we haven't really used our calculator in class at all. But he said, well, on the AP, he said it's calculator and no calculator. So I'm assuming yeah, that's it, what he'll do. It, it's kind of like the STST where you, you really don't necessarily need a calculator, but it, it's there to help if, if yeah. you really do. This is truly a calculator question. I would I would guess I would ask the, yeah. the instructor if you think something like this will be on there okay. um, before we, we go through it further. So let me keep going here. All right, finally, one that we can talk about. Um, question 10. All right, so we're still doing limits. Okay, um, determine the limit graphically, um, confirm algebraically. I, but okay, so normally, normally you would just take this number 10 and, and you would put it into, into, into here. So it'd be two times 10 minus 10 over 10 squared minus 100. So this becomes zero over zero. And this is called indeterminate form. And you don't need to know that for this part of the course, but it will come up again. Um, basically, you should look at the bottom and be like, can't divide by zero, but this is bad. We just, we just say this is really bad here. So the first step when you're finding limits is just, just try the number. Probably you saw this in class. Yeah. The second step is to use some algebra and then the third step, which we'll get to in, in probably in another problem here, is to use some creative algebra, meaning I call them uh, non-obvious things to do, because until I tell you, you you would never know to do these things. They just they're just not not um, like something you've seen before. But here, you know that you can factor this. So the limit as x approaches ten, two times x minus ten over x squared minus 100, you can factor the bottom. And that's a very common thing that you might see. So this is where, and I'm going to kind of go off to the side here a little bit. These are where things like all the factoring you learn, like sum and difference of cubes, like, the, like these are the extraneous ones you're not used to seeing, but these are the kinds of things that can come up in these questions and your instructor expects you to know them. Um, for the test. So that's where you gotta maybe ask these things like, hey, like how much factoring are you gonna be able to do? Because the, the calculus is is over here on the left, but the prerequisite stuff's over here on the right. So just, I guess, think, you know, maybe maybe consider asking asking that here. So what you do is you, you, you cancel things out and you get two over X plus 10. And then you just plug in the 10, right? Yeah, you go back to the strategy that you, you just, um, that you, you tried, you just try the number again. And so it's two over 
10 plus 10, which is 2 over 20, which is a 1 over 10 or 0 0.1. Okay. But you should be prepared to do some amount of manipulation uh, for, for that. Yeah, we've been doing a lot where they cancel out like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know what, I don't know what to like, th there's too many possibilities to go through in a lesson because because like everything is there like like here's a, a sum um you have to know how to handle seven plus x cubed and factor it out yeah you have to multiply the binomials right. or the trinomials here like this and you have to know to do that so uh you know if you're doing this on your homework maybe you go to to uh you know Wolfram or you go to Mathway or something and you you have them do it but you got to be able to do this on on the exam right kind of thing okay um so that one the same thing you would just cancel out and then plug in your the zero yeah I mean I mean uh so like this this becomes x cubed 340 oh no what happened my uh, my tablet just powered off here. Let me no. see what's going on. Ah, that's really odd. <laughs> just a moment here to get settled on okay. this. Don't understand why this. Almost back. There we go. Okay, so let's do that. Let's get this back here. Okay, so all right. Are you still? You're not seeing my screen. Let me. Let me. Um, I can. I can see your screen. You can. Can you see yeah. the? Uh, you still see this question? Okay. Yeah. So what I was getting at is, is like there's there's something there's some other terms in the middle here, but you get you get x cubed plus some other terms plus 343 minus 343 over x. And so, so these cancel, okay? And then let me actually get those numbers. I, I guess we need them um, for what we're doing here, I'm trying to shortcut this too much. Twenty one x squared plus one forty seven x. So what this reduces to is the limit as x approaches zero, x cubed plus twenty one x squared plus one forty seven x all over x. So you end up canceling each of these with an x. Right. So this becomes the limit as x goes to zero. You have to write that every time. X squared plus twenty one x plus one forty seven. And then you go back to strategy one, which is to plug in zero, plug yeah. in zero, zero well, squared. Okay, I got you. Okay, there's all sorts of calculators out there that do this, but they don't give you the steps, and that's that's where you got to know, you know, what what is the expectations of uh, of your instructor. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so got another question here. I guess I guess I got to. Go off on maybe a tangent on these. Um, so there's some there's some stuff you have to remember in um, in 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 doing like these certain problems. So the the limit as x goes to zero sine n x over x always equals n. So that that's why this one is is six. Is that do you follow that like like this is a definition okay yeah i get yes okay so let's say let's say i asked you for the limit as x approaches zero sine 5x over 4x so this one's slightly different so if the four wasn't there what would the limit be um like like imagine the four is not there it's the same form as this nx over x sine of zero 
it, well, it's, ju it's just this value of n. Okay, so let me make this different. Let me just change it. I'm going to go into to, uh, extreme here. So the limit of sine 5x over x is 5. It's always that, that number there. The limit oh. as x approaches 0, sine 1 half x over x is 1 half. Okay, I see. So uh, what, what I was trying to get you to see here is that the, the instructor could vary this. They could say the limit of, of x goes to your sine um, 7x over 3x. And you're like, well, this is different, Matthew. You're right, it is. This 3, though, you can, you can rewrite the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 third, because that's really what this 3 is. It's really a 1 third, times the limit as x approaches 0 sine seven x over x. And this one, this one right here on the right, this one is seven because of this, this thing that we just, just looked at. And then the, this one is just one third. So one third times seven, okay. Right. Or seven thirds. Now there's a few other of these that you can, that you um, can, can um, potentially, um, do so let me let me new share uh with you we'll, we'll go to the graph uh, I, th this is important enough to kind of divert away from um for the moment here so let me new share new share uh this screen with you so what we just did is y equals sine 4x over x and you can see how 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 that number is, is right there, the top. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so if I put if I put a, a a four there, see how it goes down to one? That was it was it becomes that number over that number. Yeah. Okay. But we can do this for like other ones. So how about cosine five x over x? Oh wow. <laughs> so this one doesn't have one. So that so like like they, they look the they look kind of similar, but see how on the there's right like an, this this one goes up forever. Sorry, what were you gonna say? Well, there's an asymptote. At there is. Yep. Zero. Right. So that that's that one. Like if you're on a test, you might not remember. Um, well, let's look at what's another one. You might see tangent three x over x. Ah, this one's interesting. <laughs> right. See how it approaches three. Right. Now let's put a number on the bottom. Like let me put three down there at the bottom. Now it goes to one. So sine and tangent are very similar here. Yeah. Meaning that like you can kind of derive them. You can get a, an answer without knowing them, but cosine you cannot. Okay. So that's that's kind of one of those things that you, you know, you got to, it could come up on an exam that might on the AP. Um, so, yeah, just, so I understand how you found the, when I was approaching the three, but how do you find by just like looking at it that it approaches one? Like, are you talking about tangent now? Yes. So tangent is like sign that it approaches whatever this number is. Here. Right, so I got that. But then when you put the three on the bottom, how do you know that it approaches one? Be, uh, because this becomes like one third times that. Oh, okay, okay, I see. And and th that you know so so here here's one let's uh, let's do this one so sine four x over x let me not graph this so you don't get the answer times tangent uh, one fourth x over x oops why can't I get just that one sorry I'm trying to do too much here yep. let me just do that one slash x. Okay, so what is the sine four x over x approach at zero? Four. Four, and how about this tangent one fourth x over x? It's gonna approach? One fourth. One fourth, so when you multiply four times one fourth, you should get one. And that's exactly what you get here. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is the two you absolutely have to know are sine and tangent, and they're very similar in how they work. So, you, you know, it's not like I'm asking you to remember a bunch of different things uh, for that. And cosine? How cosine, do you know? cosine doesn't work in this way. <laughs> Sorry. You just don't? It doesn't that. You don't get one. Okay. 
Yeah, sorry. I mean, you might get like over two, but then it's this, it's just the same old cosine. Okay. I mean, it's just the regular cosine. Okay. Uh, I'm still sharing here sine int x, uh, absolute values. These are kind of extreme cases. Okay. These are good ones to do. Did you, how much trouble did you have with these or were these clear? Like I had from the a, left, from the right. a lot of trouble with those and I had okay. to get help on those. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, um, let's, let's look at some of these together. Um, I still don't really understand the left, right thing. Yeah. Uh, well, you're driving, so there, there'll actually be a, a <laughs> you know, there's, 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 there's some basis here for this. Okay. Um, all right. So first let's look at this thing right here that I'm circling, limit f of x as x approaches zero from the left. Wait, I, I Oops, I you're not, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I need to switch, switch sharing. Thank you. Okay, so I circled this up here at the top. This means limit of the function, which in this case is the graph, as x approaches zero from the left. So that negative sign there means from the left. Okay. And, and you've heard that in class. So I, so yeah. that means you're going left to right. to right. Okay. So here is zero and I'm gonna trace it from the left. So I go left of it and I just trace the curve. What does it approach? What's the, what's the output? Zero. zero. The output is zero, yeah. So the, the, this is called a one-sided, go ahead. But if it's if it has like another like a filled in circle like how that one does, um, it wouldn't be one in that case. So f of zero is equal to one. Oh, but not like what it approaches. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now this 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 one that I'm circling now, the limit f of x as x approaches zero from the right. So from the right means you know, right to left. So you find you find your. Well, it's saying that the function approaches zero from the right. It's no, it's asking it's it's asking what the output is. It you you got to figure out what it equals. Oh. Yeah, I mean, so this this isn't. I can see why this is confusing now because it's not the the very first thing you should find is the limit as x approaches zero from the left of f of x, and you just said that that's zero. Right. Now you need to find the limit as x approaches zero from the right, f of x. Well, isn't that just the same? Zero. It is. It is. But you 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 treat it as if they're different. You you know you trace yeah. okay. along there, and you play golf. This is like the green, and you're you know you're over here in the fairways. You're trying to right you know, create a path towards it. Okay. So that's no big deal. But f of zero, which is different, is one. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those weird weird questions that, as a new calculus student, it's like, what do you mean? Like the limit exists but it's not it's not the same as the value that it's defined at so it's like it's like you can see it from both sides but you can't like it's not the thing that you're seeing right so let's look at like the, the more realistic question for the exam we're going to ask the limit as x approaches three from the left so here where is let me get my mouse here is three. So from the left is this way. What's the y value there that it approaches? Nine. Nine, yeah. Okay, so from the left, it approaches nine. What is the limit as x approaches three from the right? Um, so you look for three. From the right, it approaches this value down here. What's the y value there? Wait, can you, oh, well, it's zero. So from the right, I'm going this direction, from the right. So, so why more, for the left one did you go like all the way up though? Because that's like, I'm, I'm imagining I'm on this curve and I'm going up to that point, wherever, where I stop when I hit X equals three. Oh, okay, I see. So, so zero for So the it's other. zero, yeah. So there's always, three things that they can ask and then they can ask you um well maybe you haven't gotten this then they can ask the limit as x approaches three 
but um, if these are not the same, then then this does not exist. Yeah, we went over that. Okay. And then the fourth thing they can actually ask you is what is f of three? And it might be either of these numbers or it might be something totally different. So if they ask that, is that asking where you find three on the like x x axis? Yeah, x is three. What is the y value there? And it it happens to be right there at zero. Okay. Okay, that makes more sense now. <laughs> yeah, so let's see if you got another question here on this to, to look at. Uh, yeah, this is a good one. Let me increase the graph here. Hmm. All right, so letter A says the limit as X approaches zero from the left. So I'm looking, this is X equals zero right along here. And from the left means I traverse the curve. I drive from the left or like I'm heading east. So what is the Y value that it approaches? Um. So from the left, what is the y value that it approaches? One. One. The letter B is the limit as x approaches zero from the right. So again, I find zero, and then I traverse the, the right curve. Right, left, so it's negative two. Negative two. Now, it does not matter. It does not matter that it does not exist there. Like, it does not matter. It's just, what is it approaching? Okay. You don't have to actually get there. What is it approaching? Now, I think the third question, we'll call it, B slash C should be what is the limit as X approaches zero F of X. And since they're not the same, it does not exist. Wait, but didn't you just write the same thing that they have the limit? The, is... uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't see that. Yes, this does not <laughs> exist. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, this does not exist. So, so you should expect to find the left limit the right limit and then the limit at that point. And then what is so, the actual function output? So if they are the same, the limit would just be whatever that number, like if they were both that, same, it would just yes, be yes, two. Yes, okay. yes. And the output at that point is, is one. But for example, let's say, let's just say I, I gave you a graph where- <laughs> Wait, that's, sorry, if, if both of those were filled, if, um, if both those circles were filled and then it asked for f of zero, what would you do? It, they, they would not be. That's the, okay. but, but this, the one I'm about to give you is a possibility. And then it's filled in up here. Okay, so this is one, this is negative two. So here, the limit from the left is one. The limit from the right is negative two but the function is defined up here at three. So that's, that's like this scenario here, but the, the, instead of this being filled in, it's filled in up here. Okay. And so, so you've gotta be really good at just like understanding what each of these mean by themselves, by themselves, and then how to combine them. Um, don't try to do them all at once, I guess is in short is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah, okay, this is a good one to do. These are, I'm sure these were frustrating first few, first time around. Um, okay, so this question, this type of question tests your ability to understand when you substitute a number in and when you uh, just use the number or when you like use the number um, like as is for X, for example. So let's look at letter A. Letter A is the limit as X approaches eight, G of X plus five. So there's a property and I've seen this. Some instructors, they want you to write out which property you use to do this. Actually, the U of A does this. 
um, for whatever reason. The limit is X approaches eight of five. Like, then they want you to, there's a checkbox that says, I use the addition property. It's like, okay, I use the addition property. Great. <laughs> but you have to know that the limit of something plus something is equal to the limit of them separately uh, 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 there. So um, that that's like part A. You got to be able to break, break that apart. So now we're just looking at these individually. This is defined as negative two. It's given up here as negative two. This right here, this could be a little bit confusing, especially on a test. Um, whatever this number is, is what it becomes. It doesn't matter whether it's eight pi, you know, 10 to the minus 30, 10 to the positive 30. What does the graph of this look like? Do you recall when it's just a number? Just a straight line. It's just a straight line at five. So it doesn't matter where you are. What is the y value? It's always five. So that becomes three like you have there. Oh, okay. Letter B, limit as x approaches eight, x f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches eight, x times limit as x approaches eight, f of x. So let's do the one on the right. The one on the right is zero because it's defined that way up here in the in the original. It's given uh -huh. as it being zero. What is zero times anything? Zero. Zero. So we don't even have to we don't even have to go further, but let's talk about what this would oh, be. You just broke up, you just broke apart this limit as x approaches a x f yes. of x. Yes. So there's the zero. there's the multiplication property of limits. And it's it's like yeah, it's like that's what it is. You can take functions and multiply them together. You can take limits and multiply them together. Um, there's probably tons and tons of like, like uh, stuff on the internet about them, but I don't think it's worth, um, you know, getting into. You, you, like, you don't really want to know why. I guess is what I'm at. Yeah. Uh, So uh, from here, you, you could figure out this one. So this one on the left is eight because you're taking eight and you're putting it in for X. Right. So it's eight times zero. Are you hearing any static or feedback on this? Oh, no. Okay. All right. So eight times zero is, is zero. All right, so letter, letter C. Letter C is the limit as X approaches eight, G squared of X. Any sort of guesses how you deal with this? Um, G times G. Yes. So more generally, though, let's just say this was like to the fourth power or the one half power. You can say the limit as X approaches eight G of X squared. Or if it was one half power, it would be one half power. Okay. So you just you just bring that power power out. What you said is correct, but let's say it was cubed. You don't have to write times times. times. You, know, okay. you, you just so you just get the number, which in this case is negative two. Oh, and then you just square it. And you get four. Oh, easy. Okay. Not too bad. Okay. All right. So the last one is probably the most uh, sophisticated, exam worthy question. But when you break it apart, um, you'll, you'll see that it, it's just about finding uh, three, three pieces. So you can break apart the top and the bottom. So this becomes the limit as x approaches 8, g of x, over the limit as x approaches 8, f of x minus 1. So we can get this top number. The bottom number, though, we can break this apart. So this becomes, on the bottom, the limit as x approaches 8, f of x, minus the limit as x approaches 8. And let me make this plus uh, of negative 1. And then the limit as x approaches 8, g of x. So this might be something to ask your instructor. Like, do does the instructor expect you to like write all this out? Okay. Or, or can you can you just say, get that number, get that number, and then subtract, you know, subtract one on the bottom there. Because essentially we're getting three numbers here. 
the limit as x approaches eight, g of x uh, is negative two up top. F of x is zero. So we're just getting three numbers, one, two, and three. Like, can you go from here to here if you understand this? Uh, like and, and, can I, or like is well, it like, like after after we, yeah, like like this is okay, but will your instructor be okay with it? Because okay, okay. like I said, some instructors <laughs> want to say, I use the quotient property. I use the- Oh, so uh, I don't uh, think he'll ask us that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, this is pretty good. 21 is pretty good. Let me see what 22 looks like. Uh, mm, no. Oh, come on. Give me a better one here. Um, I'm just running through the questions. Uh, let's go back to 21. Does this no longer give you the drop down of the questions? There it is. Okay. All right. Okay, determine the limit at uh, C. C is really two. So it wants the limit as X approaches two from the right and the limit as X approaches two from the left, uh, F of X in both cases. So you have to figure out which one you're using. So from the right means you're going, you know, that direction. Mm -hmm. So, th so like, like that's, that's why it's this, it's this bottom one. Cause the bottom one, like, like this is your dividing line. Um, Mason Dixon line or whatever you want to you know, <laughs> call it like there's a line there where you're like okay like here's it's one way or the other so this the, you know x greater than two is over here and x less than two is over here so when you're going this way you're, you're using that that top one so instead of f of x here I can actually say oh since it's from the right I know that it's x over two plus one I know to use that one because it's it's over here and that's what that's what this piecewise function says. This one here from the left is is the one minus x. I know that that one works because it's you know it's that function over there and that function over there. So maybe making a, a picture like this could help um, to make sure you know which one you're using. It depends how comfortable you are with this notation. Which first time around uh, you're not right. uh, too comfortable. We've also really avoided things like the limit as x approaches negative one from the left, which I think is really odd the first time you see it, stuff like that. But uh, I didn't see any problems like that. So I guess, I don't know, maybe your maybe your instructor's hiding those, but um, so so to get the answer here, you're you're just gonna take the the x value now and put it into to these, since you've identified which one it works in. So this is, uh, one minus two, which is negative one. That's how you got got those values. Okay. Um, I looked through the rest of 2.1 before we came back to this one. Um, there's a couple other questions we could do, but I, I'd like to move to 2.2 now, unless you you have something else that you would like to yeah, see. That's, we can move on. Okay. Yeah, it's probably better to get to more because so then we can review at the end what I yes, yes. All right. So we're looking at 2.2 and uh, uh, infinite limits. Ooh, okay. So this is, I guess we can look at this. All right, so this problem says to find the limit as cosine goes to infinity for one over x plus five pi. Okay, so like the first one here is, is I think it's actually better to write it out. So it's asking for the limit as x approaches infinity, uh, cosine one over x plus five pi. So what's the very first thing you do when you take a limit? Um, like what's the very first strategy? By plugging 
it right. Didn't burn. So how do you plug infinity in for a value? Well, you have to like figure out what happens when you put that number in. Like what is one over a really giant number? A small number? It's zero essentially. So this yeah. equals the cosine of zero plus five pi. Right. Because this part is zero or approximately zero. So this becomes the cosine of five pi. And then, so you took trig, and you're supposed to know that. <laughs> how to calculate. You're supposed to know where am I on the unit circle? Yeah, I need to learn my unit circle really fast. And maybe did the instructor say that, or did they just? He they said just, just first quadrant. Oh, okay. So here's here's zero. Here's here's zero. Pi, two pi, three pi, four pi. Well, he said you should. Pi. He said. If you know the first quadrant, then it's easy to know the rest. Basically. That's that's the that's the classic answer. You, you yeah. probably want to know more than that uh, just to be. Um, I to hope be, for uh, this test, he's not going to make us know it, but we'll see. Well, well, okay. So here's how here's how this happens. I ask you for the limit as x approaches negative infinity, cosine one over x plus five pi over four. Yeah. So okay. it's essentially the same problem. It's the cosine of zero plus five pi over four. And now you got to know the cosine of five pi over four. So that's why that's why in the instructor's mind, they're like, oh, this is totally reasonable. Like the students are supposed to, you know, <laughs> know these things, yeah. I guess. Um, do you get a refer reference sheet for your exam? Um, no idea. I can ask him tomorrow. Great. I, I would ask about a reference sheet and um, start you know, prepping that with uh, with some some things um, for that. OK, let's get back to that. Assignment. Uh, OK, infinite limits. All right. Okay, so there, you're trying to find, we'll just write it, the limit as X approaches infinity. And, and that's one of the issues with like doing it in Pearson is like, like on your exam, the instructor is going to give you something like this. Like this will be the format of it. It won't be, you know, A, B, yeah. like this. Okay. All right. So there is, um, there is the sort of the algebra, algebraic approach to this. And then there's just sort of like the cut through and here's the rule to use for it. So so which do you, which do you want these sort of the algebra like the uh, correct way and then do you or do you want the like the the rule that 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 cuts through the algebra i'd say probably the algebra because i feel like we're gonna have to show our work okay so the first thing you do is you pick the highest degree term seven x to the fourth seven x to the oh, fourth yeah and then you identify that it's x to the fourth Two, you divide every the top and bottom by, in this case, x to the fourth. So you take the limit oh, as geez. x goes to infinity. This yeah. is the correct way. And if you haven't seen this in class, you know I, uh, I can divert. But you would write this over three x plus three over x to the fourth. So let me let me actually move this limit down because it's it's really it's really there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now you divide. Okay. So this is the limit as x approaches infinity. Seven minus seven over x cubed plus nine over x to the fourth over three over x cubed plus three over x to the fourth. So I divided each of these by x to the fourth, each of these on the bottom by x to the fourth. Okay. Is that okay? Clear? Yeah. So there's this rule, limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity of, of something, one over x to the p, where p is greater than uh, or equal to one, this always goes to zero. Okay. So over here, that doesn't apply. 
excuse me, that does not apply to this, but it does apply to this one. I know it says seven instead of one, but the seven could be brought out. So like, yeah, so this is like one over X cubed. Okay. So what's the limit of one over X cubed? Well, it's zero. This, this part up here is zero. So this becomes seven minus zero. Wait, how did you get zero? Did you plug in zero for X? No, so I'm okay. So let me let me get in. So this this is where it gets kind of kind of. Um, so let me. So this one up top is is. Let me rewrite it. Um, let me grab this. So this right here is really minus seven times one over x cubed. Okay. And then this is nine times one over x to the fourth. And these down here, three times one over x cubed plus three times one over x to the fourth. Okay. So the, the limit of, of seven at infinity is seven minus seven times zero, that's, that's what's zero, plus nine times zero, over three times zero, plus three times zero. Oh, wow. Maybe I should have just done the shortcut. <laughs> well, that, that's okay. I mean, we didn't waste that much time doing this, but if this becomes seven over zero, which is division by zero. So it by look. zero. Well, that's bad. But, but what this effectively is, is seven over 0. 0.000001, which is infinity. Oh, I see. So the shortcut, it has to do with the degree of the numerator over the denominator. Okay. So let's go back to the original question. What's the degree of the, the numerator up here? Four. Numerator is four. The denominator is four. one. If numerator is greater than denominator, it either goes to plus or minus infinity. Oh yeah, we learned this last year in pre-calc. Yes, exactly. If the numerator is less than the denominator, it goes to zero. If they're equal, it goes to the ratio of leading terms. So in that case, it would be like seven over three. Yes, if this was x to the fourth. So how do you decide if it's positive or negative infinity? It depends on the, the leading terms, um, like whether, whether uh, like if this was negative seven x to the fourth, it would go to negative infinity. Okay, so if there's a negative somewhere in there. So, so it also depends on the, the degree and the value of leading term. Right, okay. Because if it's odd and it's negative, it's one thing. If it's even, if it's negative, it's another, um, and so on. Okay. All right, so this is a good point, place for us to stop. Um, I know you said you wanted to uh, do a lesson on Sunday. If you know now, what's the earliest possible time uh -huh. on Sunday that you would be reasonably available? I'm not talking like 8 a.m. I'm just asking like earlier in the day because I am. Um, um, honestly, I'm free anytime Sunday. So whatever works for you is good for me. Is 10 a.m. too early for you? No, I can be up by 10. <laughs> okay. How, do you want to make it 11? Um, I'm okay. I'm okay with either of those. Or... Okay, let's do 11. All right. So I'm I'm just moving it on my calendar to 11 a.m. on Sunday. And you don't have to do anything, but I actually don't know what you see on your side uh, for that. Wait, which one are you moving? The one for tomorrow. Oh, okay. Is that okay? Or is that? Yeah, is yeah, that... yeah. That's good. So okay. do I have to reschedule it again? No, no or... you don't have to do anything. You just, you can use that booking link that you originally made for. So um, it just, it's just, so I just changed it on my calendar to like su Sunday the 29th at 11. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, so if you ever need to reschedule, just let me know. You don't, you don't need to pay a fee. Just tell me what's, tell me you need to reschedule or something and I'll, I'll uh, do it. Or if, or if you really need a time that isn't available, just text me and I'll try to, I'll let you know, like in this case, I didn't have it available because of like travel. Um, 
but I could do it earlier in the day. I just didn't want to stack up a bunch of appointments right. and, and have, you know, issues with, with that. But um, okay, I want to, so I want to make sure you get what you want. So uh, go ahead. What, what? So now it's, uh, I have one on Thursday and Sunday, correct? Yes. I have you down for Thursday at four. Yes. And Sunday at uh, 11. 11. Okay, yeah. perfect. All right. Well, that is all for today. I'll send you the notes and the uh, screen recording out shortly. Okay. Thank Thanks again you. for scheduling. See you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.